our civic class today, we will talk about the benefits of disciplined behavior. We have explained what being disciplined means. We have seen the attributes of a disciplined person. Today we want to see the benefits that comes from having a disciplined behavior. We'll look at six areas. That's the only objective we'll have today. I will list it, then I'll take it one after the other. We're going to see the benefits that come to those who have disciplined behavior. It can be in the part of an individual. It can be in the part of the community. It can be in the part of the nation. So we're going to look at it from different perspectives. Uh, now, I have six. I'm going to discuss today. We have so many, but I'm going to concentrate on this six for this class. One, it's provision of social amenities. Two, income generation, savings, and interests. Uh, sorry, and investments. The third one is creation of an enabling environment. Then the fourth, strong institutions will emerge. The fifth, other social institutions and assist fundamental human rights. I'm going to look at it from the country's perspective and talk about the individual and others. Provision of social amenities. When we talk about social amenities, it has to do with those essential things like water, electricity, good roads that are provided for communities. If a community or a society is well disciplined, they will be able to generate revenue that will help them to provide the social amenities. If the people who live in that area are disciplined people, they will not go into criminal activities. They will not go into things that will hinder and hamper progress. They will not be corrupt leaders who will siphon the fund that is meant to provide social necessity for its citizenry. So disciplined behavior will help them to increase productivity, will help them to uh, save more and use it to do capital projects that will benefit others because they have disciplined behavior. So in the aspect of the nation, we then have corrupt leaders, we then have people that perpetuate trouble that we make them to divert fund that is meant for something good to other areas. So it will help them to use this fund, this uh, available fund, to provide social necessities, social amenities for the public, for its citizenry. Number two, income generation and income generation, savings and investments. If you are a disciplined person, you will not spend anyhow. Your disciplined behavior help you to have a saving culture, help you to generate revenue, and help you to invest. If you are a disciplined person, you will not use your fund to do drugs. If you are a disciplined person, you will not um, loiter over your business. You will be committed. You will be resilient. You will be ready to put in your best. You will be ready to learn a skill and better yourself. You will be ready to gain from your learned skills. And when you have learned these skills or you are good at what you uh, have at hand, you will be able to save. You will be able to generate income that leads to improved standard of living. I think I should add that improved standard of living. As another individual benefit. Help you to improve your standard of living. And then when you have improved your standard of living, you will be able to invest. And when you have invest, you have set long-term goals that will take you out of poverty. Because you don't look at investment as something you are going to take overnight. It is something you are going to look to mature over a period of time. So because you are a disciplined person, you have planned, you've disciplined yourself, you've 
come to embed that cultural belief, non-system into your system, and you are able to save, generate, and invest. Strong institution we emerge. A disciplined, well-behaved country will attract investors. We attract good institutions. Now, institutions uh, we emerge because we use this um, provision that we have. We we'll judiciously make use of it. We we'll build hospitals. We will build good amusement parks. We will make life easy socially for our citizens. We will have things. Museums, tourist centers that attract people, ease their stress, ease their pain, live a better life. Because you have been disciplined, you have invested your money, the country's money, the individual's money, in areas that will profit the country economically. In that way, it serves an investment that will be generating revenue to cater for other se uh, sectors that needs to be looked into. Then we'll talk about um, other social institutions, NGOs, other institutions, non-governmental institutions, both um, foreign and locally, we emerge. They will be able to help others because people around have disciplined behavior. They benefit from these social uh, institutions. Fundamental human rights. A disciplined person keeps to law, walks around the borders of the law, uphold the rules, do not go against government constituted authorities. Know that there are things that are humanly good and there are things that are humanly bad. And so if you go within the borders of the law, nobody will trample on your fundamental human rights. You will have freedom of movement, freedom of speech, freedom of the assembly, freedom to move anywhere, freedom to own property. But if you are a lawbreaker, you don't have freedom of speech, freedom of movement, because you are sent to prison. You can't talk anyhow. You will not put yourself into trouble because you are a disciplined person and you know your boundaries. So a disciplined person Respect his fundamental human life. He has his right to life. Nobody takes it away from him or her because he's not going against the rules. He's not going against the law of the land. He's living his life to uphold unity, progress, and the interest of the nation. He doesn't do drugs. And so whatever it's his right, he respects it. Another respects it because he's not going against the law. Then improve standard of living. If you're a disciplined person, you are going to be persistent in what you're going to do. You're going to always show up. You're going to be punctual. You are going to uh, be transparent. You're going to be trusted. And it host a lot of other things. And so, if you have these attributes, and you have a skill, you have a business, people trust you for it, and people are ready to entrust their money into your hands. And when people entrust money into your hands, you are able to make gain, you are able to make profit, you are able to um, better your life economically, and you are able to invest like we have in number two. And so there are a lot of benefits if we are disciplined, if we have disciplined behavior. It's an attribute that every one of us needs to embody. Let's try to be disciplined. If I look at it from the athlete's point of view, an athlete who is disciplined wants to endure pain, wants to strive, get to his, uh, his plan. He wants to lose 5 kg, he puts in his best, he disciplines himself to get to his set goals. That's how it is for every one of us. You are a student. You want to be patient. You want to be resilient. You have want to uh, always show up. You want to always read. You want to acquire knowledge. You want to set goals, meet them, and be a better you tomorrow. 
You are somebody who lives within the community. You want to be disciplined not to be a lawbreaker. You want to be disciplined to have a skill that put food on your table. You want to be disciplined to respect the fundamental rights of others. You want to be disciplined to make the environment an enabling place for everybody to fit in. If you have a disciplined behavior, you don't want to look for trouble. You don't want to perpetuate trouble. You don't want to siphon public fund. You don't have want to be corrupt. Our leaders need to have this attribute. If you're a disciplined person, you will not be corrupt. You will not take public fund for your own self. You will not divert what is meant for the public for your own individual gain. You will look for the interest of others and be disciplined to serve those whom you have promised to serve. These are the benefits of discipline. So this will be it on our civic class. Remember, it's national value. What is it that the nation wants us to imbibe as young ones, as even old persons or old individuals, as adults? Let's imbibe this quality. Let's make our nation great. Let's make our family great. Let's make our community great. A better family, a better nation, a better community makes for peace and progress. It's my pleasure being here. Subscribe, share the video, give us comment below the comment box. Let's interact. Thank you for coming.